Hello. Today, I'm going to show you how to use Tracking Pro tracking software. First of all, click Sign In. Then, enter your credentials. Select GPS Tracking Server and click Sign In. Once logged in, you will be able to manage your fleet and add devices. First of all, add device. Click this green button. Here, you need to type IMA or device identifier. To find the IMA, you need to check your GPS tracker's backplate. For example, for the tracking pro and devices, you can find the IMA number here. If you're using a mobile device or a mobile GPS tracker, you need to open it and then you can find the device identifier here. You would then need to type the same number in the box on your left. Then you type the same number in this field in the web app, and then click Save. Once you've added the device, it will appear on the left side in the Objects panel. Then you have to configure your GPS device to send data to the GPS server. You can always check your user manual to change your IP address or port. Once your IP address and port are configured correctly, your device will begin to send data to the GPS server. Wait 10 seconds to 1 minute, and then your device will become online. On the left panel here, we can see its yellow dot. You can click on it. The yellow dot will show you that the device is online, but not moving. If the dot or arrow is green, it means the device is moving. And if the dot or arrow is red, it means the device is offline. You can always change the behavior and the color by editing the device. You need to go to the Edit window, click the Icons tab, and here you can select any color you like for any state. If you don't like the arrow, you can always change it to a different icon of your choice. Or a rotating icon. A rotating icon means that the icon will follow its angle. So let's say you're turning right or left. The icon will rotate in concordance to match its position. Once the device is online, you can click on it and you'll see additional information, such as the address that it's at, the stop duration, and how long it's not been moving. And if you click Show More, you'll see more information, such as the position, altitude, angle, model, and protocol, as long as you've added them before. Also, if you click on Google Street, you can see where your device is located. If you click Enlarge, you'll see a more detailed picture. You can also see the address. And if you click Street Preview, you can see the street in real time. Now, as you can see here, you can click on any of the devices that you have and monitor them all at once. You can add them to groups and view each group separately. For example, if you click the minus signs, you'll see that the menu shapes up into each individual group. However, when you click the plus sign, the group will be expanded and show all of the tracking systems that you have in play. And let's say you want to monitor one device at a time. All you need to do is just click on it. When you click on the device, you'll see a blue stripe, which means the device is being followed. And you'll be able to see in the main screen exactly where the device is going at all times. 
And if you click it again, you'll see that the blue line disappears, and so does the map. And you won't be following the device any longer. This is very useful if you have several devices in one window and only want to follow one at a time. Another way to follow one or multiple devices at the same time is to use the follow window. So let's go over to a device and click follow. And this gives us a separate window so you can follow that individual device. And then let's click on another device and hit follow. And now we're following two multiple devices at the same time. And if we want to follow the devices on a different map layer, click here, select Street Satellite, select another device, and you will see a real time projection of the street below. This gear icon is very useful in accessing the most frequently used commands, such as show history, follow, send command, and edit. Okay, let's move on and edit the device. We've talked about the main tab and icon tab, so let's go to the advanced tab. In the advanced tab, you can add the device to a group. And here are our groups. To create a new group, you need to go to Setup, Object Groups, and here you can add any group that you like. And once you've added a group, click Save. Now let's go back to Edit, Advanced, and Groups. And the selected group is Boats, but you can change it to any group that you like. Or you can change it to ungrouped, and it won't be grouped at all anymore. These boxes are all optional information, such as SIM number, device model, and plate number. These boxes aren't necessary, but could make it more convenient for you later on. Now, I will explain the show GPRS templates commands only. Normally, when you send a command to a device, you click Tools and Send Command. Select the device, and here you can see all of the default commands. You can also choose custom command. Type in your raw command, hit send, and your raw command will be sent to the GPS device. You have a lot of raw commands available for this device. You also have a bunch of standard commands, such as position, periodic reporting, and many more that are available, but aren't necessary to use. And if you want to add your own commands, go to Setup, GPRS Templates, and add your own command. Add Template, and add as many commands as you like. And then you click Edit, Advanced, Show GPRS Templates Commands Only, and then all of the commands that you created in the Setup tab, those commands will be available when you hit Tools, Send Command, and select your GPRS device. You will not see any of the standard commands. You will only see your GPRS templates commands. So for example, if you only have one or two commands that you need to use for your devices, you will see them all here, instead of all of the standard commands. Now let's look at time adjustment. It's an optional feature and you don't necessarily have to use it. But sometimes if your tracker is unable to send time in UTC zero, then you can actually adjust the time here. So if your device is unable to send UTC zero time, it's going to be timed incorrectly in the platform. Therefore, you can individually adjust the time for each device.
So if you click any of the times available here in the table, you will be able to change. And this is not a recommended feature. If your device is unable to send UTC zero time, and you are unable to change the time in the GPS device, you can always change it here and get the correct time. Now let's take a look at fuel measurement. If you don't have a fuel sensor, you can define how much your car consumes and define the price. Once those numbers are properly defined, you will see the correct fuel consumption in the reports and the history. Let's move on to the Sensors tab. Before adding a sensor, make sure that you've connected your device and activated all possible sensors. Then, the system will be able to detect all of those sensors, and you will be able to add them here. Before you add a sensor, make sure you go to .com, go to User Manual, and click Sensor Management, and read up on the topic. This page clearly describes how the sensors are working. So for example, if you want to monitor the battery level of your GPS tracker, here is the diagram in order to do it. Here is your GPS device. It sends all the parameters to the GPS server. Then those parameters will be available in the history in the data log. Then, once those parameters are visible, you'll be able to pair them with sensors and with the events. Now we are in this stage on the sensors page. So let's try to add a few sensors. To add a sensor, click Add Sensor. Type in any sensor name that you like and select the sensor type. The sensor type depends on what the parameter is. So let's see what parameters are detected for this device. We have odometer, ignition, input output, and other types. So let's say we want to add an ignition sensor. So we select Ignition Parameter, and then we have to select the Ignition type of sensor, which is AC on-off, or Ignition on-off. Both are actually good to use. Now let's take a look at the On value and the Off value. To do this, you need to go to History and check the data log for this device. So let's check the history of today, or the last hour, and we'll see all of the available parameters. You go to History, then click Data Log. and you can expand the window for easier viewing. Now here is our ignition parameter. It's always true because this car is moving. But if the car is not moving, the ignition sensor should be false. We can also check the history of another day to see if the ignition sensor was false at any point.
So we found one where the ignition status is false. This means the device is not moving. And this is why it sends the parameter value of false. But we know if the ignition is on, it will send the parameter value of true. It just happens here that the ignition is off. So it's giving us the parameter value of false. So let's add those sensors now according to these values. Let's go to the Objects window, click on Gear, and to the Add Sensor tab. Let's name it Ignition. Let's select AC on and off. Parameter name Ignition. On value is true. And off value is false. Let's hit save. Now that we've added the ignition sensor, we can monitor the ignition in real time. And it says that the ignition is on. Once the ignition is on, we have to go to the Accuracy tab and select the sensor AC on off. And this is the sensor that we configured previously. And then click Save. Now if the ignition is off, the data won't be calculated. When you have the ignition sensor configured, it will accurately show how many hours a car was driven and how many miles. So it's very useful to have the ignition sensor configured. Now let's go to the next add services. Click Add Service, and here you can add any service. Services can be used in various scenarios. For example, let's say you want to check how many days are left until your insurance expires. You can also check on how many days are left before a car part needs changing, or an oil change. So click on the Expiration By tab. and you can select how you'd like to be notified. So for example, if you have insurance, you need to select days, and then in the interval, you need to put how many days until your insurance expires. Or if you wanna change parts every 1,000 to 10,000 kilometers, click an odometer. And then you can define the interval here. Trigger event when left will notify you when your insurance is about to expire or when your car part needs changing. And if you click on renew after expiration, you won't have to manually redo this every time. You can also define the email that you want all of these notifications sent to. Now we're back in the Accuracy tab, which we talked a little bit about before. These are the sensors that you can set to detect engine hours and movement. But by default, it's GPS if you have no other sensors. Or if you have the ignition and engine sensor, this is a more accurate way to collect information for your history and your reports. The minimum moving speed is set to default at 6. If you are below 6, you will not trigger this. Now we're in the Tail tab. This will show you the last points on where your device or your car was. For example, if you look over to the left, you'll see the tail and where the car has been and where it's going.
Now, to check the device history, go to the History tab. Select any device and select your date range. And then click Show History. Another way to check on history is to click the gear icon and then check out Show History from the last hour, from the whole day, or from yesterday. So let's say we want to see the history of the last hour. Just click the gear and click on History of the Last Hour. Now you can see the history of the last hour. You can see where the car has been and how fast it's been going. Also, if you click the play button, you can replay this time of history. And it will replay the history in real time or choose your setting and speed it up. Or you can slow it down a bit. This way, you can see where your car was driven in real time. And here's the Altitude tab. And if you have more sensors, you'll have more tabs across the screen. And you'll be able to monitor many more values. On the left side, you can click D, and D means drive. And you can see the marked route and where your car was driven. Without actually stopping. It means that it was driven for about two hours without stopping. And if you click P, it means it parked here for five minutes and 24 seconds. And if you click D again, you'll see that it drove for the next 49 minutes and 30 seconds. And if you click the start or finish icon, you'll see the summary of all of your travel. This will show you the route length, how long your car was moving, and how long it was stopped for. It'll also show you the top speed. And it can also show you fuel consumption, but we didn't define it for this GPS. If you want to, click on the Edit tab, add their values, and you'll be able to see how many liters it consumed. Now, if you click on this arrow tab, you can export the history to various formats such as GSR, KML, GPX, and CSV, if you want to use that data for third-party applications. Now, if you go over here to the right and click on Data Log, you can see all of the available parameters and parameter values that the GPS sent. You can read more about the parameters in the Tracking Pro Walks Manual. Click on Sensor or Device Management. Click on Device Management. It will describe how the sensor and device parameters are working and how they are paired. Now, let's create some alerts or geofences. Click the green button and you'll be able to add a new alert. You can type in the name or the type of alert and your email address, so you'll receive an email once the alert is triggered. In the next tab, Devices, you can pick which devices you want to set the alerts to. So let's say I want to pick Alberto Truck 1, ATR001, and then go to the Geofencing tab or the Overspeed tab. Then we type in the kilometers an hour that we want and then click add. So that means if those two devices go over the speed, I'll get an alert. And you can always select more devices or less devices to get alerts for. Also, if you'd like to create a geofence, you can add geofence alerts here. So for example, I have a geofence named test, and then I click add. 
Combined means that the device came into the geofence and then out of the geofence. Then an alert will be triggered in both cases. But if I click on Zone In, then I'll only get an alert when the device comes within the geofence. The same is with the zone out. So the device, once it leaves the geofence, so you'll get an alert once the device leaves the geofence. You can also select the time. We'll say from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then click add. So then the device, if it came out of the geofence between 8 and 8, an alert will be triggered and sent to your email. Now, the Events tab is actually a more advanced feature. So if you'd like to read more about events, go to trackingpro.com. Click on the Setup window, and it'll take you to the Setup page. If you scroll down, it'll take you to Events. It'll describe how the sensors are working and how the parameters are working. And once you know that information, you will be able to pair events with the parameters and create alerts for it. So for example, if you want to create a low battery alert, you first need to create the alert in the Setup tab. Events tab, Add New, Select your device protocol. In order to check the device protocol, you need to go to the object, click on it, and check what the protocol is. For example, this is GL200. So now, go back to the Setup tab, go to the Events tab, Add Event, select GL200, Now we go to the conditions and type in the parameter of battery or bat. So then let's select less than 30%. If your tracker sends data in percentage value, let's select 30. Then type in the message area, low battery. And then click Save. Then go back to Alerts. Hit the green Add button. Go to Devices. Select your device. Go to the Events tab. And now you can see that I've created an event for the GL200. So let's say you have 10 devices with the same protocol. You would just select the devices here, and in the Events tab, select its protocol. And now it detects my created event, which is low battery, and I click Add. Now click Save. The alert will be saved. Now, when the car battery gets low, I will get an event notification over here in the Events tab. It'll be visible in the platform or in an individual pop-up window. And you'll also receive an email about it. Now the same is for geofencing. So when you click Tools, click Geofencing. You will be able to access all of your available geofences, you will also be able to export and import geofences, group them, or add new ones. So for example, to create a new geofence, click the green button. You can then create your geofence, and then type in the name of the geofence, and click Save. And now your geofence will be added. And then you can either edit or delete that geofence. Okay, now let's talk about routes. The routes are used to actually draw a route for your driver to see if your device is moving along your specifically drafted route.
Then you'll go over here and type in My Route. And then you can actually draw the route for your driver. Click Save, and then click on Routes on your right. You can also monitor other routes and geofences in real time. So at this time, I will deselect routes. To generate a new report, click Tools, and then click on Reports. It'll bring you to a new reports window, where you can actually type in the report name, Select your report type and select the format. Now about the report type, there are many different types of reports. And to know what all of the reports do, you need to go to the user manual. Go to tools and reports and check out all of the details for all the different type of reports. So for example, you can name your report, My Reports. Select General Information, the date range, the devices. You can also schedule this report to be emailed to you daily or weekly. So you don't have to generate it every time. It just shows up in your email. And here, you can actually set additional parameters, such as speed limits, stops, and show addresses. And all of this is available in the Drives and Stops report. So, let's click Generate and see what we got. So, we've generated a general report. And here, you can see the device name, the route start, the route end, the length, the duration, and the engine hours. Now in the next tab, you can see all of the generated reports from your past and all of the scheduled reports that are coming up. So now let's check out the ruler. The ruler is used to measure the distance between one object and another. So, you can measure the distance between the start of the street and the end of the street. Now, let's check out the POI, or point of interest. And here, you can add a point of interest and name it any way that you like. Now the show point or show address will show a point by address. Or the address by typing in its address. Or you can also send a command. You can then select the device and send any default command if it's actually available for your device. Or you can send a custom command you need to check your manual about the custom GPS commands and make sure that they're available. You can also send an SMS message to your devices. But before you can send or receive SMS messages, you need to go to your Setup tab, click on SMS Gateway, and enable SMS Gateway. And now you can use our SMS Gateway app, which is available on Google Play. You can find it on our webpage by clicking Apps. In Android Apps, click on SMS Gateway and then click on Google Play and download it. Click Type and then click Automatic. Then select your country and click Save. Now, if you click on Object Groups, 
You can create as many object groups as you like. And then once object groups are created, you can then go to Objects, Edit Objects, and select an object group there. And all you have to do is click the gear, hit Edit, Advance, select any group. Once again, you click Object, Advanced, and then you can select any group. Now, if you click on Drivers, Drivers are only used if you have an I button or an Arif ID device. You then click Add Driver, write in the driver name, select the device, and then click RFID or the I button number here, and then click Save. The SMS templates are working in the same way as the GPRS templates. You click Add Template, type in the title, the message, and then click Save. Then you'll be able to use SMS templates instead of typing individual messages every time. In the top right corner, you can click on the flag and select any language that you like. And we're constantly adding more languages. So stay tuned. Now on the right corner of the map, with this button, you can hide all of the toolbars, leaving only the essential ones. This is very useful if you're using a mobile device. Just click this button and you'll see a map of your devices only. And with the map icon, you can really select any map that you like. Google Normal, Google Streets, Google Hybrid, or Google Satellite. And these are the zoom tools, plus and minus. And these are your checkboxes. This will allow you to see objects, geofences, routes, POI, or anything else that's selected. And if you click the side arrow, you can hide this window, or click it again and it'll pop right back out. The same is for the top window and the left toolbar. Thank you for watching.